was watching an old Louis C.K. bit recently, comedy bit. Uh, it was about road rage. And uh, it was funny. He was talking about how uh, he becomes kind of the worst version of himself when he's in a car, right? When he gets put in that setting, uh, the things he says, the things he thinks, the way he reacts to other people, it, it, he becomes the worst version of himself. And it's a funny bit if you've never seen it. You know, he talks about how if he's driving and somebody kind of swerves into his lane a little bit, he has no problem being like, you worthless piece of shit, or I hope you die, or whatever other vulgar thing. Uh, and he made the point, you know, if you if you put yourself in any other setting, like he, he gave the example of in an elevator, and somebody accidentally brushes into you, like you would never get in their face and yell those things at him. It would be absurd. But you put yourself in a car, and you know, you put some glass up and some road in between you, there's no telling what you might do or might say. And it's so true, right? As most good comedy bits are, um, that perspective, identifying that interesting aspect of it is, is so funny. Um, and you know, I could totally relate to it. I'm the same exact way. If somebody tries to get in, you know, if we're merging off, we're getting off an exit and there's a big line and somebody tries to get in, um, I've lost my temper more times than I could count to something like that. And just in general, right? It's just interesting. It's not even just road rage always. It's just the, the, the context, right? The environment of being in a car, the way in which people act, right? The, the road rage is certainly a big part of it and your temper and your, your lack of patience and your, um, I guess boldness in that, but also in other ways too, right? You see people picking their nose in the car as if nobody else sees it. Um, you see all sorts of different behaviors that are just very interesting and unique. Um, and it made me start thinking, um, you know, how that might relate to social media. And I say that because social media is such a big topic for me. Um, I've talked about it a little bit before, but, but by and large, I, I tend to believe social media is, is net negative for society and people. That's not completely negative, right? There are certainly positives to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, etc. But my belief is it's, it's net negative for a whole host of reasons. But the one, you know, I'm focusing on here ties back to this Louis C.K. road rage point. Um, much like when you put people behind the wheel of a car and you put them in that environment, it changes them a little bit. The things they're willing to do, say, think, change, their boldness, their willingness to confront people, call people out. I feel like you have a similar dynamic that happens when you're on social media, right? When you're on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever it is, and you're interacting with people, your boldness, your willingness to, to call somebody out or to, to, to fight with somebody, it gets so heightened and it's just an interesting phenomenon, right? You, you think about politics being the obvious example of this, but it plays out everything. But, you know, same thing Louis C.K. did with the car versus the elevator. If you're at a dinner party with a bunch of people you know and the topic of politics comes up, um, you're not going to start shouting, you know, about how much you hate Trump or how, you know, he's destroying the country or how liberals are ridiculous and, you know, Nancy Pelosi's the devil and all these types of things. Um, you're not going to share a story <laughs> that you heard about how, you know, Donald Trump is, is secretly a Russian spy or a Russian agent and, you know, he needs to go to jail or how Chuck Schumer is, you know, should burn in hell or <laughs> whatever it might be, right? These, these kinds of crazy things that you will so freely post on social media. Um, you're not going to get into an argument with somebody who says that, you know, everybody needs to wear masks at all times. You're not going to start screaming at that person and tell, yelling at them about, you know, your liberties and what you should be able to do. The context matters and you're going to be more reserved and you're going to be more respectful and you're going to be more tolerant of those things. You're not going to be as bold. Yet on social media, in the comment section of a post, you would, many people would easily do that. And, you know, a lot of people say, I guess social media um, has enabled that in many ways. And, and again, I think this, this context, this road rage behind, you know, in a car phenomenon explains some of it possibly. That there's something that happens to us as people when we feel safe, right? We feel like we're in a certain setting or context where we can freely express our views, um, in a way in which other people have kind of set the norm or the precedent that it's it's acceptable, it's, it's okay to express extreme views. Um, where we feel safe, right? We're at a distance. 
we feel um, removed from reality to an extent, much like in a car. Uh, it's silly, you're just in this box on wheels, but you feel safe and removed and you know, you're moving at a good speed and you know, if you wanna keep moving, you have no confrontation with that person. It's just whatever you wanna yell or shout. And on social media, obviously, you're, you're sitting you know, in your dining room or in your bed or wherever it might be. And there's something about that. I think there's parallels between the two that enable that and and I think you know obviously it leads to the biggest parallel between the two for many people much like Louis CK said they are their worst versions of themselves in that context in that environment um, people end up fighting and arguing and, and getting more extreme in their views and getting more hateful in their views when they go on social media um, and much like somebody in, in a car in a road rage type setting it's almost they can't help it it's, it's almost as if they just transform into somebody else and, and they lose control of themselves. But the danger in the social media setting is that because it's in our pockets, on our phones at all times, um, you, you, you end up being that person more than you're the normal person or the normal you versus, you know, if you, if you commute to work every day, you know, for, for 45 minutes or an hour, sure, <laughs> during that period or maybe, you know, a couple other trips to the store or whatever, you might be that worst version of yourself. But then you step out of the car and for the majority of the day, you're who you're meant to be or who you should be. But with social media, you're always there. Right? You could pick up your phone at any time. You could be at work, you could be sitting in traffic, you could be on the train, you could be on your couch, you could be anywhere. And all of a sudden you pick up your phone and you have that transformation and you get this boldness and you get this um, sense of uh, righteousness, whatever it is, right? Where in the, in the metaphorical sense, somebody swerves a little bit into your lane and all of a sudden you're telling them, you know, they're a worthless piece of shit or you hope they die just because their view was slightly different than yours. Just because they did something that rubbed you the wrong way slightly or inconvenienced you a little bit. Now you feel entitled. You have this righteous sense of, you know, rightness to, you know, attack them and go after them. Um, so it just, it, you know, it, it puts into perspective a little bit, I think, what happens on social media. Um, and it, it makes you start to think about how do, you, how do you account for that? How do you address that? And I always think awareness is probably the biggest thing. First, you have to be aware of what's happening, of that transformation that's happening to you. And maybe this parallel to road rage and how that feels will help some people. I know for me, when I experience road rage, as with most things like that, you usually feel pretty bad afterwards. You recognize, um, hey, that's that's not like that was that was pretty absurd. I can't believe I was just yelling at that person. If anybody's ever done it with you know a family member in the car, or their wife or whatever, usually they're yelling at you like, would you calm down? Would you knock it off? Right? Um, if your kid's in the car, worse yet, you know that feeling you get of, did I really just do that? Was that just me? I think we need to bring that mindset to how we act on social media. Um, you know, is that really the person I want to be? Is that the person I'd want my mom to see or my dad to see or my kid to see? That that's how I act in any setting? Um, so I think bringing that awareness and understanding how you are acting on social media and putting it into perspective of would I act like this in any other setting? Again, if I was at a dinner party, if I was at... Um, you know, a friend's house, if I was in a classroom, um, if I was at work, all these different places that you could put yourself, would you say those things? Would you share that type of information? Would you share those views so confidently? Would you be so hateful towards these other people that see things a little bit differently? You wouldn't, right? So, so use that, learn from that, understand what is it in those settings that stops you. And in some cases, it might be as simple as fear, right? I don't want that person to hurt me. <laughs> I don't want that person to be mad at me. I don't want to be ostracized. I don't want to be shunned at work. Well, well I've said this before, right? The phrase, keep that same energy <laughs> on social media. Understand that those are good instincts. You have those instincts for a reason. Just because you're sitting in a car or just because you're on Facebook doesn't mean those things should go away. It's still the same real world that you live in interacting with the same types of people. So maintain those limitations on yourself. Maintain those kind of guidelines and guide rails that you would in other settings and apply them to social media because ultimately that's the person you want to be, not the person you feel like you can be or transform into on social media.